bags are packed are you ready to go this time tomorrow we'll be on the road riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Children of Verte. We're so excited to have you here. Uh, and as usual, we start with Adam and our wonderful, beautiful, lovely sponsors. We've got Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. There is an Electrum chess code on the overlay and in chat, so be sure to grab that. And if you're coming from that game right now, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Also, Die Hard Dice, you can use the code Erte to secure 10% off your purchase. Yeah, they have supplied our cast with, and here we go. We are on the, wow, this is the U's today. Um, so we're, we're really chomping through that alphabet. But they have supplied our cast with utility units. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that one a lot. <laughs> oh, it's hard to say the word unit without one. But, uh, anyway, utility <laughs> units um, and... Uh, yeah, so we're almost at the end of the alphabet, and I guess we're going to have to start over with a new set with A after that. I don't know. Or maybe we'll take submissions for what you think the dice should be called on the next episode, but we're almost there. And then finally, tonight you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape, because epic games need epic sound. I am Adam Bradford, the CDO of Demiplane. We have a lot of things going on with Demiplane, including... Uh, an upcoming closed alpha for our Pathfinder character tools that uh, we've been uh, working on for quite some time. Excited to get those invites out soon. So keep your eyes peeled and watch all the accounts and the places. Uh, some notifications will be going out uh, soon on, on all of that. Uh, it, it is definitely coming. And tonight I am playing Silas Jordan and um, I can't wait to see uh, this calm, nice, almost vacation of a town that we finally <laughs> made it to after all the harrowing experiences we have had up to this point. <laughs> vacation. Hey, everyone. I'm Alicia Marie, and you can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I am a creative artist, costume artist, performing artist. I'm generally a creative person, and I just wrapped up a really important big project on Friday, so I'm sort of in the smiley, breathing mode, like big time, so happy. Anyway, tonight I'm very happy to be here, especially right before the holiday. I am playing Frizz Armstrong, attorney at, at law, <laughs> perhaps. Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on most of the socials as at Dreamwisp. Um, and uh, you can find me streaming on Twitch as Dreamwisp Jen. I do all sorts of things. I'm a writer, performer, um, game designer, all sorts of weird stuff. Um, but most importantly, tonight I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on most of the socials as Obo Lauren. Tonight, I'm playing Neb, who's excited to see what everybody's going to do in this new town <laughs> and try not to rush ahead. No, she's going to rush ahead. It's probably going to be, yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's me. Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on socials at Hope Lavelle or at the Hope Lavelle. Um, give it a shot, type it in. Let's see what happens. Um, and tonight I am playing Miss Robin Beckett, who has her Polaroid camera ready for anything that might happen. Uh, and mostly she'll probably just be capturing the back of Neb as she runs away. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I'm Deborah Wall. I'm your storyteller for this evening. Thank you all so much for being here. Players, everyone at home, let's get cozy and settle in for the 28th chapter of Children of Erte. 
So where we left you all last time, you had uh, wrapped up after a harrowing night on the train. Uh, uh, Maeve did an incredible job driving this this train along the tracks. The rest of you chipped in and refilled the water and the the uh, wood. Uh, Steve, the statue, has been helping you along the way, um, and you were just pulling in to Hollow Vale Station. So I think at the end of last week, we were a little rushed <laughs> to get it in and I, I didn't fully really kind of clarify everything we were seeing. So I want to make sure we do that right off the top here. So the train platform is, it's all wooden, very old, original. You're definitely looking at like 1850s, 1860s, kind of back in those gold mining days. Um, you know, as you kind of look out from the, the front, the engine of this, the cab of this uh, train, you can see the town... Uh, Main Street literally just directly off the side of the platform. You could just step down off this platform and about 200 feet beyond that is where the main drag of this town begins. Um, on the left side, you see three buildings and on the right side, you see three buildings. Way off in the back there, you see a cemetery uh, kind of, and then it tends to kind of go a little bit down a ridge where you see the river. You've been traveling along the side of this river that came from Twin Creeks Mine and the river just continues around the other side of the town. Um, looking a little bit off in the hills and the mountains, you can see a lot more small cabins scattered throughout the trees uh, and the mountains there. Um, but this main drag is what you see ahead of you. The buildings are old. The paint is peeling. If it were summer, you'd see tumbleweeds, you know, rolling across. Um, but right now, you're really pretty distracted by a slew of frozen, half-decomposed bodies lying all throughout the main street of this town. Uh, they're not moving. They are, many of them, wide-eyed opened, but covered in a light snow, so there is no heat melting the snow on their bodies. Hit the gas. Get going. <laughs> is that is that the official way we're saying we're leaving? Because I thought, <laughs> I mean, now we know. So let's just be careful and destroy them all, like one at a time, right? Wow, I. Wow, Neb, you're really, you're really <laughs> taking this all head. I mean, we've only been on this adventure for a couple of days, but you are like really, really taking it on. Well. This, at least, if they are zombies, now we've encountered one, so I feel a little and more we're, confident. We're certain here that this isn't just, it's a ghost town attraction, and these are props, oh. and maybe well, not if, people. If they're yeah. props, then we don't yeah. have to worry about them turning into zombies. If they're zombies, then we're worried about turning them, that they're turning into zombies, right? So, and Neb will very intentionally light her hand on fire and go... <laughs> Distance? One at a time? <clears throat> well, you know what? I'd love to just sit back and watch you throw fireballs from a distance at all of these uh, dead bodies, but... Great! Oh. Okay, yes. I'll oh, well, you had, you had more you were going to say? I got super excited that you were just letting me go, but what, what, what idea did you have? I just think we shouldn't, you know, count our chickens before they hatch, and let's go poke at one. What do you think? I, I think I tried to poke at one and it tried to grab my neck. So maybe poke at it with a stick or, 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 <laughs> and she points at the fire in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll do the poking this time. See what happens. What are you going to poke with, Robin? Like your finger? I've got a knitting needle. Okay. Maybe Here, attach the knitting really needle to a, to, to a longer stick. Get some distance there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. taking it on face to face. Are there any of these bodies on the train platform or are they all on the street? They're all down in the street. And they're good, you know, they've got a good like 100 feet. You know, it's 200 feet to the main street beginning and about it's 100 feet before you sort of see any of these bodies, uh, you know, close to you. So you've got a little space. And how close are the the trees that are kind of surrounding this main drag? Uh, how close are they? Um, yeah, probably fifty feet. Like they've clear cut out a good little spot for this this town. Um, yeah, but you know these thick what? wooded forests. What era of clothing are these? They're pretty far away, but you can give me a disadvantaged investigation check. Okay, <laughs> disadvantage. They're covered in okay. snow and they're far away. That's fair. 
it's no. not okay. four. Uh, Hard well, to so tell. It would be at seven. A four, a seven, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're covered in snow. They're quite lumpy, but this is, you know, winter, so potentially they could be well, uh, well uh, adorned. Well, had we heard anything about Hollow Vale? Other than um, that it was connected to the mining town and yeah, that was where people so lived. I believe what has been shared with you about uh, Hollowvale is that, yes, it's it came up with the kind of gold mining of this area and the interest. It had been a smaller operation until the mine struck gold in which more people came to join. And it really was sort of thriving for a while. But the kind of creepy story that Augie told you is that one night... Uh, in the middle of the night, all of the gold that they had been mining from Twin Creek's mine just sort of disappeared. Um, it seemed that either the stope dried up overnight, as well as everything that they had taken out seemed to have just gone. Um, so they're not sure what happened, but of course that immediately killed all the industry here and a lot of people left and it sort of took the town down. Um, the economy of the town went away. Um, let's see, the other thing that was just, so you... She called it Steve's mine because she said Steve had been etched into the lintel at the at the entrance, which you saw. Um, I believe she also shared with you that um, Stephen Hawkins was the uh, sort of proprietor of the or not proprietor, like the mayor of the town, the sort of main guy who had established mm -hmm. all this, maybe discovered the mine. So she always assumed they were the same people, same person. Am I also remembering correctly that the person who originally owned the train also had a home here yes okay leave that's yes i believe we did share that thank you mm -hmm. yeah five hours between the mining hollowvale okay so there's sticks over there so that we can give robin something a little longer than a knitting needle <laughs> and then then we start to just poke and go <laughs> poke and Wait, go I, i'm so i'm so sorry and you see silas like kind of you know coming out of showering or something and uh he's like I, I i i'm sorry i missed a little bit of that like the plan is we're trying to poke what well if we're going on the assumption that the bodies are zombies we want to set them off right just to make sure wow so... that's like a real assumption here like for for real well i mean it... i can also do this from a distance that's like the if idea we, if we want to just get a stick and i can poke from a safe or reasonable safe because zombies are like shamblers, right? Like, so they can't move that fast. Oh, that, that one from the train moved plenty fast for me. I don't know if that was a zombie, really. Like, because it didn't seem what, it's like... It's the 28 days later thing of the rage virus. So it's, it's yeah. a technicality of whether it's a, virus, a, a zombie or a virus. or. A... Okay, I'll, I'll agree with semantics maybe on that. Like some type of undead creature that wants our demise. But ultimately the issue is the quantity of oncoming unavoidable hordes of So listen, I, I'm totally fine with Ish. doing some mind poking um, out there, but... Do we have a plan if it actually does wake something up? Yeah, we take it down like we did before, Silas. We have a shard to find. Wow, she is absolutely right. We have no time to waste. Uh, exactly. Uh, wow. Uh, you all must have gotten a great night's sleep or something. <laughs> but I am digging this attitude. And um, Silas is going to seriously just walk forward. Okay. <laughs> and like I will pick up a stick if I see one readily available. There's plenty I'll of sticks around. Yeah. Start poking okay. The so they're about a me. they're about a hundred feet away. You can, you, you're going to reach that far. I'm walk forty feet. Okay, gotcha. Then I'm going to. Then you're going to within. So as the stick that you pick up and you're all watching as this happens uh, goes down and starts to poke one of the bodies, you're all still pretty far away, so it's still sort of hard to see. It pokes once, pokes twice. On the third time, a hand comes up and slaps it down to the ground. Uh, you see it kind of scrape forward. It sort of runs its face against the stick and then lies down perfectly still once again. So listen, I don't know what I was expecting there, <laughs> but that was still super surreal seeing that happen. All right, so we know oh. what we have to do, right? We Burn the field. To... Yes. What is it with you all in fire? <laughs> I've been told yeah. that you kill these things with fire. That's always the, the thing that people say, right? You kill it with fire. I, I thought like that was a, like a classic. 
I don't know. This, I mean, if you guys just want member to burn, me, you know. burn the town down, you, you can. But you know what? I'm actually quite light on my feet. I was once a dance instructor at the senior center, and I know my way around some people and zombies. It'll, it'll be, we can just sneak by is what I'm trying to say. You think we Robin. should moonwalk our way through dead bodies? Yeah, Robin, I was thinking what? like a skip the loo, one, two, three. What waltz, kind of maybe? dancing? What kind of dancing did you teach? Salsa. <laughs> <laughs> we can attempt to salsa our way around. How many dead bodies are we looking at around? Like how many? Um, <laughs> About, yeah, I mean, you know, at least fifty. Um, you know, and they're not like there is some room between them. They're just all over yeah let's just go dancing in the minefield that sounds like a <laughs> great idea um, are are they all basically on the main drag or if we were to circle the town we they, don't see them kind of out in the, in the you woods. don't see them out on the other sides of the houses so presumably you know they're really pretty focused in the center drag of that that town do do we want to avoid altogether unless we have to like robin i completely believe that you could salsa your way past hundreds of zombies <laughs> what i'm afraid of is that once you've gotten past them that they're gonna follow okay wait we're making a lot of assumptions here well what? my first yeah. assumption Whoa. was correct so i'm gonna continue to uh go on that assumption <laughs> what if the zombies are friendly we didn't ever even think about this zombie could be different from the other zombie. I mean, they're not all alike. I mean, maybe they're just sleeping, and the reason it slapped the stick was because we disturbed its slumber. We, maybe we can talk maybe. to them. Maybe we can prod its thoughts. Right, Silas? That's true, uh, Silas. You want to try to I dig mean, in the zombie's mind? While this conversation is yes, going on, try. may I look at the platform? You may. I would like to examine the platform and sure. see if there's writing if there are any signs of conflict or damage um, investigation yeah. there please another uh, thing i wanted to bring up after this is did, did steve is, is he feeling better <laughs> steve feeling better uh steve is still sitting on the back of the train right on the iron caboose you know maybe he stood up and the whole train kind of you heard the <laughs> Over, kind of under his weight as it was released um, as he's, you know, on its shocks. He stood up. He's just standing at the back of the train kind of waiting. I, I, um, I would like to just kind of offer out there. I'm perfectly fine to play this out retroactively somehow. <laughs> but I will say that Silas, at some point during uh -huh. that journey, uh -huh. I, I did indicate <laughs> that's right. that you I were sitting found with him. my way there. Yeah. That's right. And I think mm -hmm. that that's between Steve and I. Okay, great. But, but, but I, did I love that. At least yeah. talk okay. to Steve okay. and offer okay. some sort of apology. Uh, okay. Like I said, between we'll, Steve. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. We'll. I'm gonna note it. We'll have a. We'll All have right. a moment. Excellent. Okay, great. Maeve, what you looking for? So Maeve, yes, sixteen. Well, no till I found it. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the sixteen you're looking for, uh, you see that everything looks to be original. Um, but you are noticing some things like some newer screws in certain places. Some repairs and renovations have been made. And again, you do find a plaque that reminds you of the ones you saw in the mine uh, that says, you know, Hollowvale Station established 1856. You know, so you've been uh, sort of following the same kind of museum setting that is, uh, is interested in, in this town and in this expedition. So this is the stop, and I... I'm pretty sure they didn't intend on dead bodies thrown about as part of the exhibition. So this is obviously for us, specifically. Mm. I didn't know you could tailor. Case. Yeah, tailor-made zombies. This is yeah, more I mean, fun this, now. This sounds like somebody is, again, a sadist if this is actually just prepared for us. But I can try to reach out to their mind, but if I have ever seen any of these shows, it's like they don't have minds at this point. So I don't know if that's actually going to work. Now, I am perfectly fine to poke it harder if that's something that you know we want to try, because maybe this is all just reflexive. Maybe they don't they aren't actually animated with some kind of necromantic <laughs> magic. Like maybe maybe it's just like you know like a death grip or you know what whatever those you know. 
I the mean, actions. Reflexes. All I'm saying is if you wake one, you wake them all. And I honestly don't think we can take all of them. We could I don't think we can take 50. Yeah. So are we going to sneak around the edges like Neb suggested? Because I'm fine with sneaking too. That could be fun. That could be fun. I'm well, just really worried about what you said. You rather, won't have like... a strange definition of fun. <laughs> I think that actually is a good point because uh, Silas, you've been talking about that the person who made this being a sadist. I don't think it's that. I think this is making sure that we've got the resolve to do whatever this is. I think anyone who anyone who didn't have the resolve to go forward at this point would have run away. So this 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 is bad. But so, I'm seeing so it as, the as a challenge, the right? Kid in the deep end of the swimming pool. Sure, sure. I, I can go with that, I guess. Well, I mean, I, I'll jump if that's what we need. But I thought we were sneaking. I mean, that's. Uh, listen, I just. Uh, those things are re close enough that if we make one wrong move, we're getting all 50 anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to offer the alternative that if we think we're going to get all these zombies. Maybe it's better that we do it on our own terms and, you know, choke points. I, I, I don't know. Was anybody ever in the military? Like, those kinds of things. I remember playing in some of those first-person shooters. I typically didn't do those, though, because I'm not twitchy enough. But but I know enough about them to say that you always want to corral them and, like, a choke point, I think they call it. And so we could, like, try to stage that. Or we can sneak around. And then somebody, and by the way, it could be me. Like I could accidentally step on a stick, you know, like in the movies, and it's like snap. And then everything looks at you, and then all of a sudden, fifty heads like come up out of the water, you know. And then they all start coming toward us, and then we're not in a good position. All right, well, all right. well to to go off of that, what if we did corral them into somewhere? I mean, do we see? Is there a cliff or or, or a, a barn or something that we could just, you know, I could just be the distraction. I could salsa my way around and into the barn and then you just shut the doors, I go out the back and then it's perfect. Yeah, what kind of buildings making a do ton you of see? assumptions. <laughs> the buildings that you see. Okay, uh, give me, let's see, The if the group is looking together, yeah. let's do a, an advantaged check from one of you um, yeah. but we'll add, we'll add everybody's, you know, thing oh. to it because you'll okay. all kind of help. Well, what kind of check are we doing? Uh, Let's do, let's do investigation again for this one. I'm a sucker for an investigation. All right. yeah. I, if if y'all want me to roll it, I'll, I'll roll it. You it's advantage, but we're gonna add everybody's Wait, intelligence modifier. Okay. Uh, investigation. So with advantage, I got a a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty to start. Plus okay. Three. Plus twenty three. Uh, plus one for me. Twenty four. I got eight both times. <laughs> What's your, do you have an uh, intelligence modifier? Um, oh, minus one. Minus one. So we're back, back down to 23 in, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah so we're around 24. Mm -hmm. Another four. What was yours, Adam? Uh, three. Another three. Yeah, so we're 26. So yeah, you're doing great with a dirty 20. Great. Okay. So we literally all put our heads together yeah. and just. You just start. put your heads together and start looking, and one of you points out one feature, and another one points out another, yeah. and you're kind of trying to piece together what you think these buildings are. <laughs> um, so looking on the left side, the very first one, this is easy. Saloon doors, uh, you know, hitching posts out the front. This is clearly the town saloon. Um, the next building is harder to figure out exactly what it is, but it looks very Victorian, very beautiful carvings, um, that kind of gingerbread uh, Victorian style in all of the wood. Um, it's one of the largest buildings on this main drag. Uh, the furthest down, um, you're pretty sure, is, 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 is the bank. It's the most sturdy. Um, you think maybe even you might be able to still read some of the, the lettering on the sign back there. Does it look like the vault would be big enough for 50 some odd bodies? <laughs> like, is it, how big is the bank? Uh, you go ahead and roll a perception okay. and uh, we'll I would go, like for you to roll I will roll thing. that for you when and we get to that, the end of this here. Yeah, it's um, going to be a zero. Going to be a zero. Big enough for 50 bodies. Might um, depend on how we You're not them. even sure where the vault is in this building. <laughs> it's just blank sides, you know, like nothing Man, here tracks. is real clear, you know, and it's the furthest back. So it's blocked by this big ornate Victorian home. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really not getting a very clear sense of the size of this building. 
On the other side of the street, again, starting with the first house on the right side, mm -hmm. um, this is also uh, a, a Victorian home, but much less ornate, uh, much more sort of uh, plainer kind of looking home, but also quite large. Um, the next building, this one still has a lot of its paint and it says general store. And the third building on the right side is super clear. This is a church, a uh, very tall steeple with some, you know, very simple stained glass. Um, and then of course, uh, way at the back, you see a fence broken down a lot of places in a cemetery beyond that and the river behind. So, uh, th so far there ain't like a sheriff's, uh, station. You do not see that. Okay. No. Mm. And is there like a mail building, like a post office? From what these are, these are the six buildings in the way that you've seen so far. So no, you don't see post office. You don't see sheriff or jail, anything like that. Oh, interesting. A, a lot of that may have been at the general store or when they were, you know, mm -hmm. making the town into a tourist attraction, they were just keeping a couple of buildings. <laughs> so, going back to the zombies for just a moment. Yes. The That one that we encountered on the train didn't go after me until I got real close. Mm -hmm. And the one that went after uh, Silas, your, the stick, didn't go after the stick until you'd poked it a bunch of times. And we've been standing on this platform for a while and I don't think anybody has moved. Yeah. And we're being loud. I mean, we I, are? I, I, I mean, like, you know, we're, we're speaking. Like, they yeah. could hear us, probably. <laughs> they, but yes, if, if they, they could potentially hear you. So, you know, if oh. that's something they're still doing. <laughs> So I don't know how, at least that one that we know is a zombie, I don't know how it knows that someone or something is nearby. Maybe we take a moment and figure out what its sphere of influence is. Like maybe, maybe we don't we actually grab, have to get very far away. Maybe we grab a bucket and you put fire in the bucket and then I drop the bucket on top of it. A bucket of fire? <laughs> I mean, that sounds really cool. I'd love to try that. I don't know how, but I... Wait yeah. a second. Silas, can, in all of your understanding of zombies and lore, do zombies know how to swim? Well, I mean, not necessarily swim, but being in water, they don't drown, according huh. to most of the lore out there. But, like, I think that if we led them to water, it would certainly slow them down. If you lead a zombie to water, can you make it drink? <laughs> no, but you can waterlog it and make it travel further down river and then mm -hmm. invest other places. Um, <laughs> yeah, just send the problem down to the <laughs> next <laughs> <major> problem. <laughs> there you go. Well, send, it the the send it to the whales. it to the whales. Then, then you get zombie whales, and that's not something you want to deal with. Oh no, I want to. I want to be able to get talk out of to my those head, whales. players. Yeah. <laughs> that the body that Silas was poking that was a zombie. Yes. It's Ooh. sixty feet away. Um, at this point, yes. Hey, I'm gonna yell at the zombie. I'm gonna. I'm literally just gonna lean out. Yeah. And, hey, I'm gonna see if anything stirs. Not a whisper. Not a whisper. Um, well, either they're incredibly patient <laughs> or they only really sense things that are super close because... Might I throw one more possibility out there? Sure. Maybe these aren't zombies in the traditional sense. I don't what think do they think? are. What are you thinking, then? I think they're ice zombies. Oh. Uh, that well, one on the trap wasn't, wasn't even quite a nice what zombie. I was thinking, but what were you thinking? Babe? We are making assumptions that these are going to attack us. It seems that that one just the stick grabbed. I agree. It. It's like one of those oh, baskets for Halloween candy that you just put your hand in it, and then like the mm -hmm. hand just like you know, like gets your hand. Mm -hmm. So maybe they don't actually like they're not interested in us. Is I don't want to assume they're zombies. It's just the odds are pretty bad. It's like, but there's five of us. We each get ten. Oh, is that oh, how we're splitting it up? I mean, I'm... okay. <laughs> so I think you could take a lot more than I can. I mean, I, I can turn into a wolf, but I think I can only bite one at a time. So, mm. I mean, you might be right. Maybe they won't attack us. There's only one way to figure that out, though. But y'all know this mirror shard is like in one of their stomachs or something. I mean, like... 
Oh, oh. I mean, that, that would that would be kind of gross. Yeah. I don't know. My it bet is be, that. But... The... Hmm. How things are going for us? Look, I mean, if what we're looking for is more about Steve, the likelihood is it would be in one of the two houses, right? I was thinking the I church like it. or <gasps> the cemetery. I mean, if we lead all the zombies to the cemetery, at least maybe we can lay them to rest. You know, I was once a security <laughs> guard for a cemetery. <laughs> I pulled night shifts, and I gotta tell you, I've got some ghost stories for you. You had a cemetery job where you had to guard the cemetery at night? Of course. Yeah. What for all the is that? You have to guard all the graves from, from the bandits. grave robbers? Yes, from grave robbers. It's It was a thing back in my what day. What decade was this? <laughs> I've also, uh, there were some pretty, back in high school and college, I heard about people who would go out and like party in the cemetery or, you know, stuff like that. So that's, that's, okay, I could see why sure, someone like Miss Robin would be needed. Yeah. I always thought that was kind of disrespectful and morbid, but. The mm -hmm. cemetery's yeah. in the back, so we can sneak all the way around a long way if we want to there. The one that, that we know moves, how close is it to? other bodies um five to ten feet they all seem to be like mm. pretty equidistantly some of them are closer some of them are farther from each other but you know they're just kind of spread out as you're looking now you can see like one of them's sitting slumped over in a rocking chair on the porch in front of the the building on the right um you know others are you know kind of positioned in places but they you know they're just kind of generally in the area but there's plenty of room to walk past them this is not like you'll have okay. to step over bodies necessarily okay. so does this look like it was a bunch of people doing things and then they just got hit with something and all collapsed where they were hard to say oh. um i mean you give me a perception check does the fence look on the cemetery look broken yeah. towards us or the other way um also perception check the two of you 14 for me. 14 for you. Um, mm -hmm. You could say that. In fact, a little further down, kind of just peeking out between two of the buildings, you see an old wagon. And you think mm -hmm. there's some, you know, a, one of the bodies kind of slumped up there, uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, falling over, sitting in the This is seriously trail. beginning to damage my calm. Um, this is like some 17. Miranda stuff. Thank going you. On right yeah, now. you don't know for as if like they just dropped dead there necessarily, but they are kind of all throughout the mm -hmm. town. Um, and then 17 on the fence. So the fence looks like it's really falling down more from age, right? It's more like snow and fallen tree branches. Things have taken this down under disrepair um, in that sense. Um, nothing seems to have been particularly pushed out or in. Uh, there are plenty of places where there's just no fence at all because the weight of the snow has taken it to the ground. Well, I don't well, know about you guys, but I'd like to check out the general store to see if there's any sort of supplies that we can get. Rhea on stuff. This is very Walking Dead. I say <laughs> we do it. If if we're gonna do this, we might as well just go through each house and see what we could figure out, right? I mean, I mm -hmm. I agree with Robin. The general store might be a good place to head for. So let's do the right okay. side and try to go for the the house over there first. Yeah. So so it, we'll my. Do. Yeah, my uh, someone I, I knew a long time ago used to say that I did, couldn't, you know, find my head unless it was screwed on. Um, I think I mentioned that before. So I'm going to volunteer as everybody is going into these creepy buildings to stay outside and watch and make sure that the horde of potential zombies don't completely overtake us. I'm saying, like, I'll stand in the doorway to, to I'll catch watch. catch by surprise. And, and and the code word is going to be Frank and Beans. Like, if the zombies start to come toward us, it will be Frank and Beans. The, Frank and should, Beans. Okay. Not Frankenstein. Frank and Beans. Frank and Beans. Right. <laughs> we need to get Steve and make sure Steve is continuing to feed the fire on the train and also just at the ready. Because if we do, what is the word, aggro? If we do bring a whole bunch of zombies with us trying to come back to the train, maybe oh Steve will, he's supposed to be protecting the train. Maybe he'll help. Yes. Good idea. I'll trot on Maybe down to the end. Maybe we should prep and Steve. Yeah, ask yeah. Like, Steve to yeah. come on forward. Okay. Um, 
Steve, you know, again, slow, deliberate, heavy steps, moves forward. Uh, as he steps up onto the platform, you hear the boards creak underneath his weight. Uh, you know, this is a big stone statue on old floorboards, but for now they're holding. Um, he says, What do you wish? There's a moment where Neb wants to ask something else and you see her hesitate. We gotta go check out these buildings. Would you stay here and stoke the fire and make sure that nothing happens to the train? Yes, little one. He steps down off of the platform and moves towards the front of the engine right. where he reaches in for wood and keeps that fire going. I've been called worse. Thank you. <laughs> All right. To the right to the right through a marching order take it back now, just before before we head off i just want to check one last thing on the mm -hmm. platform the things that have been repaired and yes. renovated it doesn't seem to be one specific area or anything right it's not like no there's you not... would based even on the last check you you would classify this as like standard general repair um you don't okay. see like like you you were asking about violence or something like that in a certain yeah or, or like if it looked like the, the new screws were all on one board or... no no this was more like yeah we don't want people to you know <laughs> this is a museum exhibit and if people get in here, they'll sue us kind of place feruza will help you with that last little inference <laughs> uh, coming back to new york <laughs> Make sure you bring your axe, okay? I'm taking this one from the Book of Silence. Now, oh, that's right. Yes, if we go into a building and there isn't a back door, yeah. it's it's very up to you. If if we start to get cornered into the, you just gotta axe the back wall <laughs> so that we have a way to get out, okay? Just okay. chop it down. Yeah, just chop it down. All right, I left it in the train. Let me go grab it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Frieza will be right back. Why, why, why is she not just carrying her axe with her everywhere in this dangerous place? <laughs> no, I mean, it's right within, you uh -huh. know, she got it okay. real fast. Yeah, Silas, do you, uh, I think it's a good idea that someone stay at the door every time we go into these buildings. Do, do you, should we buddy system this? Should you not be alone? Well, I mean, whatever's fine. I, I was just assuming these buildings probably aren't that big. But, um, but yeah, if, if, you know, only how many people, one, two, three. So like if three people want to search and two people want to hang back, that that's totally fine. That's but I do good. think that it's a good idea, you know, chopping, notwithstanding any time yeah. a building is entered, probably first of all, need to make sure that there's nobody just sitting in there that is also a potential zombie mm -hmm. uh, because they never lie down. And so you yeah. need to just like, you know, kind of scout that area and then we need to find a back door well you say that but they're all lying down well, well that yeah. one slumped over in a rocking chair right. there. i mean it just it looks like nothing actually happened to them they just you know took drugs that the galactic government <laughs> fed into their the system galactic government yes <laughs> now that's a conspiracy theory um <laughs> the so there's all these dead bodies yes, yes they're covered bad. in <laughs> I know they're covered. How did you do it? They're covered in snow. Yes. Do we get a smell from them? Again, not at this distance. Oh, God. What? I wonder if an animal could smell further. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what Neb was thinking. And so she 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 does a. Silas, I think I'm going to stay with with you and guard the door. And then she is going mm -hmm. to think about that wolf that has the really good sense of smell. Yes. And then uh, white wolf with blue eyes is standing there. All right. And, and she will to <laughs> check for that. <laughs> and she will immediately like sit and then take a big whiff okay. and see what she does. Yes. Advantaged Ooh. smell perception uh, check. Perception check. Um, well, thank, oof, advantage, uh, 16. A 16. So the wolf sort of sits, <laughs> takes things in. You do smell, I don't know. I'll just, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I'm just say, uh, yes, rotting flesh, but it's, but it's frozen and preserved. <laughs> so it is not decomposing at the rate that you're, you know, wolf brain would expect. Um, this is this is frozen meat. 
I'm gonna tuck that smell away. Mm -hmm. And as we approach the every one of these buildings, mm -hmm. um, Neb is going to try to take a whiff inside okay. and see if she can get any kind of sense from smelling Smart. that there might be something inside gotcha. and, and, and if she does pull it out of the scent wallet yeah yeah I'll, I'll figure out how to tell everybody at that point but that's that's kind of smell it x yes the yeah. smell <laughs> Winner. i'll i'll stand back up and then clearly you know when dogs smell something disgusting or they mm -hmm. taste something disgusting in their mouth kind of mm -hmm. yeah. she does that okay <laughs> what's that lassie <laughs> little zombies down the well <laughs> Neb thinks every time, every time I turn into a wolf, he's gonna say this. <laughs> Just give her scratches. All right, so are we going left or right first? To the right. Yes, All right, to that right. first uh, sort of first ha house. Yeah, first house. Yeah. The more modest house. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping a good wide berth from these, uh, you know, other lying down bodies, creatures, whatever they may be, uh, you make it around to the back of this first house. Um, it is a very quaint, fairly modest home. There are semi-sheer curtains in all of the windows. It is two stories high with, you can see an attic on a third level that has some windows and vents. Um, and as you come around the back of it, you do see a like cellar doors off to one side that have a big chain and a lock on them. And then steps <laughs> going up into a back door. I'll, I mean, I'll I'm immediately kind of... rise, not descend. <laughs> I'll trot up to the back door and mm -hmm. be ready to take a sniff when it's opened. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's closed. It is Robin closed. Will, Robin will go and check the door. I mean, you, check you, the door? You, you put a lock in front of me there's, um, there's a, oh is it locked <laughs> yeah there's the, a lock on the side there's a, door. There's a oh. like a chain and a padlock on the we, on the cellar doors we could divide and conquer no i think it's, it's not splitting a party or anything it's dividing and conquering there's a difference splitting the party is incredibly efficient so it works very is. well for you all. <laughs> uh so yes so robin as you go up and and sort of test the doorknob it doesn't appear locked this back door Open it up. Stick As you in. open it up and stick your head in, you do see silhouetted against the front door a figure. Oh, it appears to just be standing in the hallway just beyond the door. This first room is a kitchen. Uh, it is very cold. Everything is sort of off. As you're looking down past, you know, through the kitchen, there's a door that leads into that front hallway with stairs that go up in the front door. Standing in that hallway a little off to the side, you see a figure. And I'll, I'll take a whiff. Is it, a, <laughs> is it meat? Give me a perception check. Advantage again. This, this is going to be the best questions I'm going to ask all right. day. No, we're, we're yeah. plenty of these. 21. 21. Um, you do smell that smell coming from this house. But you don't think it's coming from that direction. I'll give that same disgusted look, but then I'll, uh, Robin, I'll look up at you and then look down at that figure and then look up at you. Con and I'm trying to look confused. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Robin is going to gently close the door <laughs> and turn to everyone. What? What was it? Well, and not to alarm anyone, but... I love that. No good thing ever follows that sentence. Yeah. You ever see those horror movies where the body, just, there's just a figure that just stands there eerily before it attacks you? I, I think I see something like that. Oh, yeah, not alarming at all. Did you ask it anything when you stood there? Did you say it? Hey, oh, I'm I, sorry. I didn't think about that. I, 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 I'll, I'll go ask it real quick. And okay. then Silas is going to jump up there. And I'm going to open the door again. Uh -huh. I'm going to follow as well. Okay. Hey, I, 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 like, are, are you alive? It makes no response. I am going to, it, it, uh, I'm looking for any random object that I see between here and there. Like sure, a, it's like a frying pan a, on a the frying pan. <laughs> yeah, yes. on the, on a the cast stove. iron skillet. You got yes, it. Perfect. Yeah, real old fashioned, um, well seasoned, all that. Nice. Thing. And so I'm going to pick that up uh -huh. and I'm going to spin it 
carefully uh-huh. and I'm going to, you know, go around the cabinets or whatever I need uh-huh. to do. And then I'm going to take the handle of the cast iron and I'm going to poke it. As and he... I'll, I'll follow him on in so that he okay. has backup. Okay. I'm staying at the doorway. Yeah, he's not going like, any closer. This is all telekinetic. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Pan. I will not follow the frying pan. <laughs> right. It doesn't need yeah. backup. <laughs> As the okay. frying pan pokes, where are you poking this figure? Um, in the mommy daddy button, probably, because I know that would get a response. The mom, what? the like, mommy uh, daddy. The, uh, the groin. <laughs> the the groin? The groin, yes. <laughs> There's no shoulder tap. This is just straight for like, let's okay. infuriate. I mean, it's going to get a reaction if it's it. alive. Let's do that. If, what if it was all the other zombies in for no dinner? longer going to be. <laughs> to poke this figure and it's... <laughs> okay, that's good. And I thought I was going to be saying the weird things this game. Mm-hmm. That's a already. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> it does suddenly jerkily move. One hand raising and waving. <gasps> At this moment, too, you all begin to hear the sounds of silverware clinking on plates. Uh, I'm looking around. Do I see other figures? You do not, but this continues to wave. Is is he the only one seeing this? No, you are all seeing it. I think it's like a Chuck E. Cheese thing. It's like animatronics. Yes, yes, this is for the tour. It's got to be part of the tour. And then I'm going to telekinetically take the frying pan. Uh I'm going to actually hit it much harder against the side of the head just to see. The head flops over to the side, (laughs) uh, kind of lolling there. The hand now going... <laughs> okay, just definitely animatronics. I think I destroyed it, but animatronics. You're still hearing the sound of this tinking sort of plates and silverware Whew. and atmosphere. I don't What's know if I can take where, where zombies sound... being inside the places. Seems like it's okay. Sorry, what were you asking, Maeve? Where's the sound coming from? Perception. <laughs> Dirty 20. Ooh. Definitely up front. Uh, uh, probably off to the right in whatever this room is on that sort of right side of the foyer. Is there, have we seen any any of those plaques on this building? Not from this vantage point, no. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna words. enter and I'm gonna go into the kitchen and I'm gonna look to see and smell what's there. If I see and Robin Neb is Wolf enter, yeah. definitely. Okay. <laughs> so you're all you're all sort of slowly entering through the back as Neb explores behind. Okay, Neb, uh, give me a perception for your scent. Sure. And I'll describe for you. Uh, that's not as good. That's a twelve. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're a bit distracted. Your scent as you're coming in here to look. Um, there's a lot of like fake food. You immediately sense, oh, this is plastic. None of this is edible, but there's like a little sort of fake loaf of bread. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, again, like jugs of milk that are, it's like solid white paint, you know, kind of giving it a, a, a fake look in this kitchen. Um, you don't see or sense anything in here. Um, as you kind of move forward and get closer, you do indeed see kind of this animatronic slightly you know jerky movement now as it's you know of 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 a gentleman standing very tall he is dressed in old fashioned attire uh from around the you know mid 19th century um laid out he's standing sort of at a reception desk and laid out in front of him is a a ledger <gasps> does guys. he have cowboy boots he does not no i mean he's wearing boots but i wouldn't call them cowboy boots no i have an idea i'm gonna take another one from the book of silas we can use this as a distraction for the zombies the ledger uh, i don't the think body. it walks oh we can just pick it up and throw it look. and then maybe they'll... they'd like to take a look at the ledger please yeah absolutely um as you go and look at it, it has a lot of again you know really colorful old timey kind of names um and, uh, you know, a lot of them have, like, been sort of checked off in room numbers and things like that. Um, none of them are names that you particularly recognize, though. And that that noise, the, the silverware noise, do I hear where it's coming from? It is definitely still coming from around to the right, this room. You'll have to fully step into that foyer to really get a... I will fully step into the foyer to All get right. a good look. Following As you come forward... The headstrong wolf. <laughs> 
Gotcha. And look around to the right. You see that this front room is clearly a dining room. There are a bunch of sort of small, cute tables that are laid out with uh, sort of lacy white tablecloths. Um, there are a number of other figures sitting at the tables. Uh, a couple of them hold forks and go up and down from their mouth to the plate. There's fake food on the plate. There's this little, again, the noise is still coming through the atmospheric sound. Um, the only thing that you notice is that towards the back, there is a woman sitting in a like at a piano bench, slumped over a piano, and she is not moving. And what does that smell like? That smells like rotting flesh, yes. I'll, I know Silas is behind me. I'll stop and like block the entrance way into yeah. this room. And if someone tries to get around me, I'll just put Paul out. What, what's that Nab Wolf? And I'm gonna try to make eye contact with Silas and then stare right at this piano. Oh wait, one of these isn't moving. Hey everyone, one of these isn't moving. So listen, it might be creepier that these are like animatronic robot things in here than zombies. Honestly, I think I'd rather have zombies, but these creepy contraptions are in here acting like they're eating something. But then there's this other one that is, I don't know why I'm whispering. We already established these things. So there's another one at the piano that never lied down. And uh, it is like a lot, you know, undead alive, probably. And so we can close this door and maybe keep it in there and then search the rest of the place, or we can dispatch it, you know, hatchet style, or, you know, we have let's, options. Let's save our energy. Let's just close the door and back away. Why would anyone Fair create enough? an exhibit like this? It's so creepy with these machines <laughs> moving. Like, why would anyone want to see Wait this? Wait a second. You're right. <laughs> Does this <laughs> town even have electricity? How are these things running? Yeah. Would, would there be electricity running at this point? You want to turn know? on a light switch? Yeah. Yeah, you see one. It's an old timey kind of knob that you can spin as you go over and flick it. Lights turn on above your head. They oh. have electricity here. We can charge our phones. Oh, wait, my phone's gone. <laughs> I think I'll we can charge your phones. <laughs> That's true. If we if we were to back out of the kitchen and close the door, is there any other exit from the kitchen? Um, the eggs, um, as you look at the kitchen, there is a pantry clearly. Um, and then there does do appear to be doors that specifically enter into the dining room from the kitchen. Okay. So if we were to back away, this would be the, the only way it would get out. Well, the, the country, might there are two doors to the dining room. Okay. Two. Mm. Often that's where you would store your food and then you'd bring it up. Are you saying you want to go into the cellar? I think that's oh what she's goodness. saying. Oh my goodness. That is a horrible idea. But I'm not saying anything here. That's probably I'm where not. the mirror short is. So. I think we have to check everything from the rooter to the tutor. We're looking for the shard. <laughs> that is comprehensive. So with that, though, maybe since I know that this one is, um, I don't know, it's not alive, but it, it's, it's whatever, mm -hmm. then I, uh, I will stay here. At this vantage point in the doorway, is there a window nearby anywhere yeah, in that hall? Yeah, big bay window okay. in the front of this. Uh, I'm going to basically dining. like I'm going to just kind of like you know, and I, I start like doing little <laughs> card tricks, and I'm like I'm going to keep an eye on things out here, and then I'm going to make sure that piano man or woman, lady, uh, really yeah, lady, this angle, um, go, going to keep an eye on this, and if uh, you know anything happens and she happens to wake up, then I will uh, call out the Frankenbeans. Can we see from where we are what piece is, is, is there a piece, is there sheet music on the piano? Music on the piano. Can we see what it is? Yeah, if you want to go up a little closer. I, I am going to try to telekinetically lift the book. Okay. Of sheet or the sheet music and, sure. and move it forward when, once she says this. You feel a little resistance. You're pretty sure the forehead of this creature oh, maybe is I lying. Have done that, but yeah, let's do oh, it. Oh, okay. You don't have no, to. Let's, I mean, no, let's do okay. it. Okay. You, you're pretty sure the forehead is sort of pressed up against that sheet music. As you tug it, it jar, jolts straight upward and its fingers do, 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 start hitting on that piano. It slowly begins to slow down and very beautifully play the Claire de Lune. 
Well, well, listen, she's not Sir Elton, but she definitely has some talent still. Do you want she to begin to sway? Very, very smoothly. Her fingers following it almost by rope. Oh. Uh, we can talk is... to her now. Are you alive? She does not respond. I can tune the piano for you. Yeah, you sound great. Maybe now that she's moving her. and we can get a better look, yeah. does this look like rotting flesh? Does this look like plastic? Does this look like something else? It smells to you, Neb, like mm -hmm. rotting flesh. This smells like all the other creatures, but it is moving. Is a little jerk to it, but it is much more fluid and human and alive than the animatronics that you've been seeing. Um, she she's doesn't even, sorry. starting to slow down in this sort of moment. The more you watch her, you know, it's just becoming a little bit clear to loon eerily slowing down beat by beat. I don't think she even knows she's doing it, but Neb has started growling very, very mm. softly. <laughs> poke it, poke it again. So what about some <laughs> camp town races? Silence just... <laughs> Like play, play it's something. It's just us, Freebird. But they're playing. They, they're able to manage that sort of motor function, and the things they did in life. Maybe they aren't malicious after all. Try to move the music again. I uh, so it's at this point it's just kind of floating up there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the music. And so it is the figure sitting up now? Sitting up and slowly, you know, it's as they slow down, they begin to kind of lean forward a little more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it in front of the face where the face just like touches the music again. Yeah. And I'm going to kind of waft it back and forth, <laughs> touching its, its face. Its face, it's it fine was. with that. It doesn't seem to respond too much to that. How I'm far away to... is okay. this? How From where we're, we are, well, how 25 far 25 feet. You know, the full length of this, you know, long kind of dining room area. Uh, Neb is going to start walking towards it, like creeping very, very, very slowly. <laughs> Neb very is, much you know, ready to bolt as soon as she thinks it's going to so reach out and grab her. Neb, you're shorter than the tables, so you're sort of weaving in and out of these tables. The legs of these animatronics, you see a couple of them are sort of tapping uh, as if to the beat of the, the faster paced Claire de Lune song. Um, and you're kind of moving around. How close do you want to get? What do you want to do? I'd like to come up alongside her, sit for a, not sit, sit, but like wait <laughs> for a second. Yeah, sit, stay, Claire de Lune. Like pause for there a second to goes. see if being next to her uh -huh. is going to do anything. And then if nothing happens, um, I'm probably going to put my nose and poke. So, uh, Silas would like to ready an action. Okay, Silas. Or if the uh, if this makes any kind of threatening move gotcha. towards Neb the Wolf. Ne gotcha. Neb's at the point where we need to figure out: Are we correct in that all of these are going to be hostile, or are they going to ignore us? And so this, she's going for it. So as Neb, you come up near to her and look up at her. Uh, she doesn't seem to. She is sort of slowing and moving forward. Suddenly, your hand shoots out, reaching out towards your muzzle. Please roll initiative. I would but like yes, to. You're going to go my, first. Yeah. Great. What are you going to do? Um, I had the cards in my hand. Yep. And you're going to see Silas just pick up the card and he's going to say, pick a card, any card. And as he does it, uh, you see this pink light light up the card, uh -huh. and then he throws the card forward, <laughs> and it's going to blast out to the All right. Give me your uh, your attack. Ooh, nice. Are you so kidding is, me right now? Um, <laughs> that's a total of 21. A total of 21 will hit. Go ahead and give me your damage. 
Um, eight points of force eight damage. points of force. As her hand, you know, jolts out towards uh, Neb, your uh, card actually, you know, bashes right into the hand, which goes flying forward uh, towards the piano, kind of disrupting it. But it whips right back its speed faster than you could imagine within this little moment um, and looks right back down at Neb. Everyone, please roll initiative. 18. All right. Fortunately, as a two. wolf, Neb has a much better dex and strength than uh, she two for Feruza. Yeah. Oh, poor Feruza. Uh, Robin. Uh, 12. 12 for Robin. Silas. 16. 16 for Silas and Neb. 11. 11 for Neb. All right, Maeve, you're up first. <laughs> All right. If it looks like she's going to come after us, uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, I'm far enough away I don't want to get in her face yet. So I suppose that I will just say no. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. No. Uh, so that's a 21 to hit. Absolutely. No, sorry, hit. 23 to hit. Definitely oh. hits. Absolutely. Uh, hit. And it is. Uh, nine points of damage. Nine. What type? Uh, force. So force. Okay, great. So uh, same, you know, essential thing. It bashes into one part of her body, which kind of whips her around again. She seems very, you know, kind of loose and flowy and all these hits just kind of move her with it. She's not resisting very much at all um, as she just sort of whips around taking the force of that hit. Uh, is that all? Uh I wasn't prepared to go first. Uh, Don't roll so high. For <laughs> now, yes. Okay. Uh, it is now her turn. Um, <sighs> as she sort of gets, you know, whipped around by the sun, doesn't matter. Neb is still right there. As now both of her hands sort of reach forward towards you. Um, oh. Here we go. Okay. Oh, 16. That hits. That hits. Yep. All right. Even, even the wolf doesn't have that good of an armor class. <laughs> uh, you're going to take only four, not so bad, four bludgeoning damage um, oh. as her hands slam down on either side of your head, just ringing now through oh. your brain um, as she sort of grips either side of your head. <sighs> snarling. You can see now that half of her face is missing. Um, you can see this exposed jaw and teeth on this side of her face, uh, which was sort of turned away from you before as she is now holding on to you. One eye is sort of drooping out of the socket on that side of her face. Nice. Silas, up to you. Silas is going to <laughs> move into the room, hope like I would assume, like to the head of the the table maybe or something there's a bunch of little tables yeah. okay just like move in to allow others to potentially okay. get into the room uh with with more ease and um as he does this he he just says ah mona me i guess you can teach an old dog new tricks and i'm gonna fling another card okay <laughs> and um that is an 18 18 will hit okay and that also does eight points of force damage. Eight points of force damage. Okay. Uh, same thing. This one maybe hits into a shoulder, which spins her almost entirely around on the piano bench to sort of face Neb entirely. Uh, the rest of you are seeing more of her. She's got like a shawl, like a knit crocheted shawl over her shoulder that is attached with a, a cute old brooch in the front. Uh, her, her, you know, sort of long, heavy skirts are made for winter. Um, her hair, what's left of it is mostly pretty gray, but it's straggly and clumps of it are sort of falling out onto her shoulder and onto her dress. Uh, with a bit of an apron, a little flowered apron on the front. And the as outside. as a bonus action, I am going to um, just say, and I wonder if a uh, old wolf can know, know some new tricks. And uh, with that, going to give some inspiration to Neb. Nice. nice. D6. D6 for Neb. All right. Up next is Robin. Oh no, this won't do. And and Robin's gonna <laughs> reach for a tablecloth on one of the tables if there is one. Yeah. Um, 
And she's going to say, time to put that time I was a magician's assistant to good use. And she's going to throw the tablecloth over the zombie. Okay. And that too? <laughs> Hopefully, you know, kind of just like. Okay. So, yeah, head. trying to aim for just her. Okay. And um, I need it to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here we go. <laughs> Please fail. Oh, uh, maybe that's an 11. Ah, it fails. Yes. Suddenly, ah. suddenly you just see foomp, the zombie is gone and it appears away from Neb in a different occupied space that I choose. Where? <laughs> what occupied space do you choose, Robin? Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I would have just wanted to get, get it away from Neb. So probably I'm going to put it in the corner near the door. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, so yes, put gonna... zombie in the corner. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. No, nobody like, puts some. How dare you? <laughs> just, to give a, just to give a sense of the space so that I'm clear, I do this right. So it's it's a fairly, you know, it's maybe 15 feet wide by 20 feet long. There's a bay window at the front. You're standing in these double doors that sort of head into the foyer. Towards the back is where this piano is. There's these doors off to the side that will lead into the kitchen. And between you and the piano are all these like two, three person tables scattered throughout this space. So are you wanting to basically take it from the piano and place it in the bay window, which is closer to all of you, but farther away from Neb? Yeah, that works for me as long okay, as it great. gets away from Neb, but still is in close enough range for us to hit. Which yes, is gotcha. Anywhere in the room. So it's basically going to be like 10 feet away from you guys in in, in the bay window here. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, disappears under this. Does the does the tablecloth go with it? The tablecloth would, would then fall. Would then fall. The, okay, the right. Would so so <laughs> this tablecloth <laughs> just falls <laughs> down on top of her, uh, her head. But then she just seems to disappear, right? Like the cup underneath the napkin. Um, Neb, you know, you were you originally just had these like rotting hands around fingers around your face and suddenly oh. they're gone. As you then suddenly hear off to your left across the room, as she appears sitting in a table across from an animatronic gentleman who's just happily, busily fake eating. Uh, as she is now sitting at that table a mere 10 feet from the rest of the party. Anything else, Robin? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll just yeah, we we'll... Ta da! Ta da! <laughs> I adore it. <laughs> Neb Wolf, your turn. As we've been making, uh, take putting damage on this creature. Yes. Does it look like the one we saw on the train, and where there's that those weird ice shard glass things pouring out of it, or is there human bits? So at this point, it's taken mostly force damage, which has kind of just been knocking it around. You do think some sort of crystallization, some of that kind of powder that you notice might be coming into the air, but so far you haven't made any wounds on it so nothing is pouring out okay then i'm gonna as a bonus action pop out of being a wolf Mm -hmm. because i don't want to get into melee with it because i remembered (laughs) what happened the last time uh and and i'll call that out to everybody don't don't get close to this i think it's gonna probably explode like the other one (laughs) And, no, no, no. and then I will do what I wanted to do the first time, which is throw fire at it. So All right. I'll try to I'll try to hit it with fire. Uh, does a 19 hit? A 19 hits. Awesome. It is going to take seven fire damage. Seven fire damage. All right. Um, from across the room, you're like 25 feet away now, right? So this thing just through the center of this beautiful Victorian dining room over the heads of the animatronic eaters uh, and lands in the lap of this lovely old car, you know, shawl wearing woman, um, which all of her clothing immediately ignites. She doesn't seem to respond very much, but yes, all of her flesh immediately kind of catches fire and sort of, you know, is kind of eaten up by all of that. Um, And you begin to see any place that was frozen begins to melt a little bit throughout her body. Yeah, don't get close. Don't get close. And that is me. Okay. Uh, Feruza. Oh, it is my turn. Okay. It so is your Feruza. turn. <laughs> she, the reason why it took her so long, I mean, six seconds, whatever, it took her six seconds to yeah, like react. On. Whatever. Is because, okay, what does the room like aesthetically look like? 
Just um, so it's familiar. really, really cute. I mean, it's like right out of like an old turn of the century magazine, you know, like this is very B and B. It's super cute. It's cute. <laughs> Nata Perosa. Nata Perosa. And when she was standing there, she just sort of looks around and she's like, this place is so creepy. There's like where like there should be like wainscoting or whatever they call it. There's like these dark curling mm. um, sort of um, like almost like they're like the, the what, is, what are those things that sconces and things? Mm -hmm. They almost look like they're slightly undulating. Yes. But everything just looks like it's um, like almost like it's it's foreboding. Everything in the room is just telling her. All of the metal to you looks tarnished, you know, like it's all kind of, you know, like it's all aging um, cobwebs for you or hanging from every sort of area. Uh, the food on the plates that everyone else sees that looks plasticized for you, you see maggots and flies flying around as if it's all sort of rotting in front of you. All of the and mannequins to you wear these terrifying grins with their eyes yeah. wide open. <laughs> Exactly. So she's just struck I'm by, mm -hmm. yeah, she's yeah. struck by the way the room just appears, and that's yeah. why it took her. And she just sort of, as soon as she re she hears someone, she hears maybe Robin react or go ta da. <laughs> that's when she like she notices what's happening, and then she, and of course the veins start like electrifying, and she like, <gasps> and she looks over at that thing. Is it still in the corner? Yes, it's still right across the way. It's on fire now and it's melting. Oh, it's not, is it is it dead? Nope. No, it's melted. It's just it's sort still, of like, uh, and it's well, it's it's arguable. It looks it's like it's not. I know, yeah. Sorry, arguably dead. <laughs> arguably not dead. Uh it does look as if it is attempting to stand up as you turn to look at it. Okay, she's just gonna look at the table, walk over to all those maggots and flies without looking. She's gonna pick up one of the plates. And if I can do this, she just wants to pick it up. Not looking at it, crack one of the plates over her knee, and she says, "We asked you what your name was," and throw the play, the broken plate shards at this thing, so okay. that. But they have like this sort of lightning. They have electricity. Like the plates pieces when they leave her hands, yes. they're like darted, like electric dart charged. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, exactly. give me your attack, please. Okay. I think I'll use Die Hard. Let's see. I'm scared. 14. A 14 will hit. Yes. Um, as they fly across the room from the, you know, you grabbed a plate on a nearby table, broke it, and these pieces just fly across the room, just one in the cheek, one in the forehead, one in the shoulder. Give me your damage. <laughs> okay. And type. Okay, let's see what I use. I use Throne Spark. Throne Spark Electric Dagger. Four. One since I'm raging. Plus two. Six. Six. Nice. <laughs> yeah. As each one hits into its body, wounds open up. And again, like before, these shards, these diamonds, these crystals begin to just flow from the wounds as it almost seems like they burrow deeper and deeper in. And yes, like Al, she explodes <gasps> in little shards of diamond and uh, what we call it fluorescent powder. <laughs> um, none of you, I believe, are within. You all stayed pretty far away, right? Yeah. At least ten feet away. That was the goal. Warning. Okay. Warning from uh, <laughs> they all of this dust clouds into the air in this, you know, halo around where she was, settling and embedding itself into many of the mannequins around. Um, but it seems to settle to the ground in that pool. None of it quite reaching the rest of you. I'd like to go, once it all settles, I'd like yes. to go look at the brooch that she was wearing. It is gone. Blown up. Ah. Okay. We... Well, well, go ahead. Uh, good news. I had to get really, really close before it came after me. Bad news came after me. So yes, <laughs> they are hostile. Good news. No one was close by when it exploded. So that's, that's good. Bad news. Yeah, they all explode. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we take a look? Did we took take a look at what she was playing? I don't know if it matters, but of course I think everything matters in this. this <laughs> the sheet music is still back place. there, yes. Claire de Lune, it's Debussy. It is indeed a book of Debussy. It is, okay. 
Is that the piano bench? Does it anything. open? Is it one of the storage piano benches? Uh sure. Okay. Yeah. May may we check inside of that? Absolutely. You open it up. It is filled with other piano music. A lot of it is classical, but some of it is again kind of, you know, your old Western. Um, you know, a uh, uh, ragtime kind of, kind of yeah. saloon type of music. Uh, some, you know, kind of favorite standards and things of, uh, you know, the 19th century you might might recognize. Um, but yeah, kind of a, 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 a homemaker's selection of music. Mm -hmm. Oh, homemaker's Popular music. music. Well, that was fun and all, but I think I'm gonna quickly, I don't know, let's just check upstairs and downstairs and get on to the next place. Okay, yeah, I don't think I want to stay in this room any longer than I have to. This is seriously a nightmare. Like, I just want to, you know, make sure that we're all acknowledging that because, like, if every one of these places, I mean, this mirror shard could literally be anywhere, and every single place that we're going to go is going to be, it, it really is like Minesweeper or something. Um, and there, there was, looking around the room now that we're further into it, there yes. are no plaques still. There's nothing talking about hollow veil there are no like tourist little pamphlets or um uh i'll give you this as you come around towards you know kind of looking behind you in the foyer you know you would look kind of over the animatronic shoulder at that ledger, ledger book as you come around the front there's no no uh plaque um but you do see like an unfolding kind of pamphlet that gives you a little information about the house um you know there's a name there's a woman we'll call her uh Oh, we'll call her Elizabeth Warren. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Warren was a, a um, she kept a boarding house and she was one of the sort of town favorites. Everybody loved Elizabeth. She, uh, this was her home that was, you know, uh, she, her business and anybody who was kind of coming through, anyone who was looking for a job, but yet didn't ha have a cabin up in the hills yet, uh, could stay here for a, a nickel a night. And, uh, <laughs> you know, she had a number of rooms in the upper floors that she would rent out and she'd feed people and yeah kind of a beloved uh town uh fixture uh and, and you do sort of look at it there's um the the brooch the little bit that you got the look at you think is kind of a, an icon on this pamphlet so you're pretty sure you just blew up Kill the <laughs> no it, it wasn't her oh, no. it wasn't it was whatever this is Whatever, oh, whatever that is, yeah. whatever those is. things are outside. Well, my guess would be that this would not be the place that they would keep the thing that we're looking for, since the the, the, tr the thread we seem to be following is Steve. Who, who is the like seriously? Who is the day that we think this is at this point? Who's um, the day? Who's the who, day? Who's the day? Oh, the day. The day. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, My your day. accents are just sometimes so confusing. <laughs> no, no, so, oh yeah, a accents definitely confusing. Um, so, uh, but, but, but that is the thing, is that if we have some kind of idea about who the royal they is here, then I think it probably would help us maybe frame where we think they might Well, if, that. if that Stephen, whatever his name was, uh, Julian the mayor. Yeah. No, Stephen yeah. Hawkins. Yeah. Stephen Hawkins, who was the mayor of the mm -hmm. town, seems to be to me the first person we should go looking for. So, what the mayor has the biggest house? Like, what? What, what do we think? Pretty much, one behind the gate. That would, I, that would be my guess. I think uh, it's definitely the biggest house. Even if it's not the mayor, we know that Julian Corbin had a place here, and it would make sense for the person who uh, founded the town to have the biggest house, right? Okay. Yeah, all that right. Does, that does mean we're going to have to go all the way around the town, though, because I don't want to walk through that minefield, as Silas said. No. Unless, hear me out, I've heard that at theme parks, they have these <laughs> underground cities. Who's to say that that cellar, that locked door, <laughs> doesn't lead to an underground tunnel passageway if they have these animatronics? They've got to have some place to store things and stuff, right? Do you want... Do you want to take a look? I say we take I a mean, look. I mean, yes. Yes, do I do. Want, do you want to just try to pick the yes, lock? Yes, I would like to unlock <laughs> She is about to pick the lock. That is, that is totally, I would love to watch you do it. 
I, I would like to. I'll check All right. the, pan the pantry leads down. You're going to head into the pantry? Um, yeah. As you go into the pantry, yeah, give me an investigation of the floor. So the pantry's full of, like, you know, um, canned goods and so forth. Again, most of it looks pretty fake, fakey, you know, uh, theme parky, as you expect. 19. A 19. Um, feeling around the edges, you don't feel any trap doors or any way that you could sort of lift up the floorboards. Um, uh, but you do feel a little bit of air draft coming up through them as though there is vacuous empty space beneath this. Uh, I think there's a doorway here. Well, that's maybe misleading for me. Not that oh, there's a sorry. doorway, but that but that there is, there. this is a single layer between you and whatever's below, but not not a doorway, not access. You didn't find a trap door. Okay. But just that there is there is a room beneath this. Con Got confirmation it. that a confirmation of a there. cellar. Yeah. Yes, that's all. Okay. Then yes, I, I think there's a cellar down here that's worth examining. All right. I mean, I'm excited to watch you bust open this cellar door and I'll, I'll give you a, a pat on your shoulder and, and give you a little bit of support as we head in that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Silas, what are you thinking? You don't look very pleased that we're doing this. I, I'm not going to be happy about the situation. I, I mean, I just want to like you know, throw that part out there. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm ready to get it over with. So or if we can I, find I, I, a passageway to allow us to walk between buildings without having to walk across the yes. corpses. I'm, I'm not there. particularly Creepy catacombs are great. walking yes. through fields of corpses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, creepy catacombs are much better than open fields. Um, well, my so. suggestion would be if we go down here and it doesn't lead to catacombs or anything that we don't go through, we go around. It'll take longer, but that seems a lot safer. I'm not anticipating catacombs. I'm anticipating theme park tunnels that's my but, hope but the difference between theme park tunnels and catacombs is whether there are dead bodies there right if they were intended to be buried there okay maybe you're right Let, anyway let's see what lies on the other side sure all right you pick a padlock like to try and pick the padlock pick away, yeah, girl. Pick away. and you'll get a d4 <laughs> thank you i appreciate it all right there's my piece tools uh, 17, 21, 26. Woo! Uh, 26. Yeah. You take my tools and click, click, click. And click, click, click. Um, pops on open. Uh, you're able to find all the right little, little lock pieces as it goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, the lock falls right open, the chain. You hear a hollow as it sort of slides down the side. Um, and I'm just really, Neb, did I skip you in our initiative fight? No, I, no, sure. okay. I, Came out of wild. You came out of Russia. Of, okay, yeah. great. I, I still have. I still have Silas's. Um, yes, bardic I was trying to like. Oh, but yeah, she didn't use that. Okay, great. I did not skip you. Happy. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. So the <laughs> the lock is unlocked. Um, you hear the hollow sound. There's definitely space beneath these doors, these cellar doors. So they are the kind that you reach in front and would open. You know, like a curtain, kind of up towards you. Maybe sure. you're right there. Well, this isn't any scarier um, than a cave. I think we should be fine. Yeah, I like your spirit. <laughs> okay. Who's going first? When we open it up, does is it a have you steep opened it? Staircase? Who's doing it? I, don't, I didn't know. Is <laughs> Maeve opening it up? Who's opening it? Uh, let's let's step back and open it just in case. You know, there's like you know, like the snake in the can thing. <laughs> like just in case, and I'm. Silas is going to telekinetically mm -hmm. turn it and open it. Okay. Uh, you do one side first and then the other. It is real creaky and rusty as these, these cellar doors open up. Um, you see the beginning of concrete steps that descend into the darkness. It is pitch black down there. It was oh. Agatha all along. <laughs> I'm going to just poke my head over the side and mm -hmm. I don't know how far down I can see but how <laughs> how far do the stairs go um sure I would say you know you can see they defend they descend about six feet and end in a dirt floor but that's about all you're getting from the light from outside well there's um, at least nothing on the stairs 
How? I, I pick up a rock. Mm -hmm. I make it light up mm -hmm. and then I throw it down the stairs. Yeah. All right. It uh, tinks down the stairs on rolls into the, the, uh, the dirt floor as it kind of continues to roll. You do get the sense that like it starts to pick up speed. Like it's, sloped or something like that until it kind of circles in the center over the top of a a, a drain essentially you can see a little grate um all that it kind of illuminates in that room are just maybe like the feet of some shelving <laughs> please don't say words like feet <laughs> of like shelving. objects like, yeah. I, I loved it i thought that's a lot of feet amazing. you just see a bunch <laughs> of feet <laughs> It just, it, it's a cellar full of feet. That Doesn't that everyone have that pause? <laughs> oh man, no, was, that is what I'd said. Oh, that was the best it. pause ever. I loved okay. it so much. Feet. Uh, I'd like to please. I'm. I'm just gonna go down there. Yeah. I'm gonna take out my flashlight and mm -hmm. just go take a quick look because oh. I unlocked it. I want to see. Oh, we're just there. we're just You're Scooby doing this. It's, okay. It's pretty. You know, the the steps yeah. are are narrow and steep as they kind of bring you down. Um, as you get down there, it is again cool, musty. The scent of it is very kind of you know enclosing. Um, and indeed, as you get closer to this lit up stone, there is a a drain in the center. You can see it's darker below as it sort of just goes straight down into the earth. And down in here now, with your better vision, vision you can see there are shelves all along the side. Um, most of them contain boxes. Uh, there are some bags. Uh, yeah, Ooh. mostly that kind of stuff. The bodies, uh, exits. Are, you don't see bodies or exits, no. Oh, are, uh, are the boxes labeled? Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, not really, no. Not like any kind of writing on them or anything. So they have a lot of different shapes and sizes. A lot of just cardboard boxes. We need to search these boxes, don't you think? This yeah. shard could be in there. I'm already sort of peeking just to see yeah. what's in them. To clarify, um, Robin is still at the top of the stairs just gotcha. because the door's closed. Just in case. She's ready. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> um, as you start to look in, it is spare parts. Uh, you see wires, you see, uh, you know, little circuit boards and everything. Very, very old school kind of animatronic repair parts. In like every box we open up, all the bags, everything. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. The bags, right. you know, might have some, some uh, again, fake fruit, fake, you know, props mm. and things like that. Again, stuff you are expecting from, you know, having to maintain a, a very low budget theme attraction. Mm. All um, right. Maeve. You were you were right. That's what's down here. Sadly, looks like that's it. Yeah. The drain is it like a drain? You can like pick like pull the drain out, or is the drain built into the ground? Like, is it like she wants to? What Peruse would like to do is like yeah. get the edge of her axe and like just pry it up. It pops Look right down. off. It's just a, okay. a it's like a three inch circle hole that just goes down into the earth. Hmm. Chris is just going to bend over and sort of just look in there. A spider crawls up. Yeah! Forget it. Forget Onto it. The done. We're leaving. Yeah, that's the reason Sorry. we're done with this. All right. What kind of spider? <laughs> Nev just kind of looks over. What kind, what kind no, of spider? No, um, <laughs> It's pretty small. I don't know spiders super well, but you know, hey. fairly common. Like, like, cool. a, like, a, like a wolf spider? We have those around here. Yeah. All right. uh, maybe you can turn into like too. a snake and go down there, Nev. I mean, if we think that's necessary i can try no, I, I, sorry i'd rather I turn into the spider with... so that i could crawl back up if that's if i can well, like snakes can crawl back up too right like i don't i've only ever snakes. seen the ones that like wrap around trees yeah, I don't know. so i don't yeah. know well no i don't actually want you to go down there i don't know why i said that i just got carried away with like you know how cool it would be if you changed it into something like that right right um so like but, it, so I, this is adam trying to clarify was there is there anything else in here other than this drain? Um, just the shelves and the boxes yeah. and bags and things. So we like don't that. see no. any kind of other um, exit. Do you want to do an investigation? Silas is idly doing that. Yes. Okay. Want me to roll it, or you want to roll it? Uh, you can, and that's a five. Okay. Um, as I'm you're sorry, sort of, three. A three. Four, okay. Four. I'll get it right eventually. Four. four. <laughs> Slide it down the middle. Um, as you're going around, you're just like, you're looking at the floor, you're kicking some of the dirt, just trying to make sure it's not covering anything up. You're feeling along the walls. Um, there are cracks in the walls from, you know, again, probably tree roots and things and stress over the years, thaw and cold, but nothing is really like a doorway or anything that looks like it would give. 
Hmm. All right. Well, so. no catacombs. I mean, there's a bright side to that. What is the bright side? No catacombs. <laughs> no catacombs. There aren't <laughs> corpses down here. So, general store next? General next store. store. All right. Okay. You, right. Head, you all head back up out of the cellar uh, and continue down to the next space. We are not caring about the second floor or the attic, correct? We're just going to keep moving. Yeah, you have not gone upstairs in this building. There's nothing in the attic? There might be stuff there, but I, I think I agree with all of you that the bigger house might be the place that we really want to thoroughly search first. So, okay. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe we come back if we get stumped. Bingo. I agree. I agree. Um, okay. But you're still, you're still going to clear the right side first before you go around to the main, the yeah. big house. Okay, great. So it sounds uh, like we're at least doing the general, general store. store. Okay. Yeah. General store is next. Um, <sighs> At this point, uh, you're, you know, kind of scoping out the back of it. This does not have any windows. Um, this is sort of solid sort of wood around all the different sides. There is a uh, door off to one side. Um, as you kind of approach this door in the alleyway between the general store and the, the boarding house here, um, you do see a body slumped over a barrel in this alleyway about 10 feet from that door. Over a barrel? You think we can sneak past? Well, I had to get really close to the piano player in order for it to attack me. And it was kind of the same with the one on the train. I was I was really, really close. That's that's only two, but that's that's not a good sample size, but it's something to go on. I'm gonna try to sneak past. Okay. You wanna give me a stealth check? <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, I think she might try to be stealthy about this. Let's see. Is right. the door open that she's heading towards? Nope, it's closed. Okay. Uh, 15. A 15. A uh, 15. Cool. Um, sweet. Uh, so yeah, as you skirt around, you just try to be careful about like where you place your feet, looking for more solid snow to step on. Um, and as you walk by, maybe you you know hold your breath a little so that you don't hear your breathing as much uh and you're able to slip past it doesn't seem to move in fact you know you can see the frost on its eyebrows your eyebrows eyelashes as you kind of get closer to it and move past but you make it to the door checking the door it is locked hmm. i like turn to nave <laughs> yes <laughs> i just point at the door ah is this uh, oh, is what is this the only door? Do we want to try to look for another door before we? You mean around the front? You've, you've. I, I'm <laughs> assuming you've checked the sort of sides and back of okay. this particular. Oh, building. okay, okay. So yeah, they're the only the only door other than the front door is the one that Robin mm -hmm. is now standing in front. Of. I mean, I mean, I, I will just throw it out there. It's been you know probably 18 years or so since I picked my last lock, but as long as this is the old style, I probably could. Do it from a distance. Really? I I, I am able to use um, whatever this telekinetic force is, just <laughs> like it was like normal hands. It, 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 now I can't do it too far away, but 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 I can I can do it if it's you know reasonably close to me. So I I can try it from a distance. I well, even if you open it, we're gonna have to get over there. So uh, th that part is very true. Um, and <laughs> there's you're also, the, to try if there's like. also the snake in the can thing that if it opens and Miss Robin is right there, that it might just jump right out at her. So give it a go. Give it a go. I'm going to move around so that I'm basically the, the body is between me and Robin, but we're both a little bit far away mm -hmm. and I'm just going to be holding a little bit of fire in my hand okay. waiting for this thing <laughs> yeah. to strike. Gotcha. Um, okay, and then Silas, you're going to telekinetically... I, I'm, just, just... I'm just going to uh, pull out uh, the little, you know, makeup mm -hmm. case, one of the makeup cases mm -hmm. from my bag and pull out uh, the tools mm -hmm. and um, it's, you know, it's intended for this purpose, yes. as opposed to Maeve working with uh, with with the tool. That, gotcha. That she yes. Has. Um, and, See, you um, just haven't tried it with a bobby pin. I, I, I'm I, missing I, out. I, it's the, the grip of it. Is it's. Yeah. I'm just telling you. 
l listen, like I am incredibly impressed by what you have been doing. And this might not work because, like I said, it's been it's been many, many years. And so I'm just like floating it over there. Okay. And as mm. as I'm doing so, um, I'm just kind of like, you know, kind of humming at first and then barely singing under my breath. And I'm like, everyone told me not to stroll on that beach. Woohoo. And I'm just like, <laughs> like thinking about the force a little bit. Uh -huh. and, and I want to <laughs> go over there and I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get the feel here. All right. Go ahead. Give me a thieves tool or a okay. sleight of hand. Uh, I'm going to go with sleight of hand and that is going to be um, that is a dirty 20 a dirty 20 on this alright it is a very old lock um, you feel like you probably could have just stuck a screwdriver in there and it would have popped <laughs> so <laughs> it rusts almost the instant you get it in there and the door pops and swings open in front of you Robin Again, it creaks as it goes inside. It is quite dark inside. In this space, because there is no windows, there's, you know, a lot of light coming in from just the left, which is the, you know, the front of the store. But with all of these sort of stacks and rows of, uh, you know, shelving in front of you, it creates a lot of shadows and dark corners um, as you peer in. The space right. right in front of you seems to have a lot of, like, paper goods um you know things like brown packaging paper and um right up with strings <laughs> exactly it's probably twine as well yes a lot of twine uh that kind of these uh, are a few of my stuff. favorite things <laughs> two of my favorite things yeah. there's a few of your favorite things right there robin. <laughs> um robin peering in she kind of adjusts her glasses and then she's just like and she just kind of snap 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 and you just see that her dancing lights pop up and she's just going to send Ooh. them in to kind of create an ambient light as they fly over the top they create this lovely glow that sort of you know permeates throughout the space it's a fairly large building um do you go in after looking to see if there's anything that i can see where i mm -hmm. am so from where you are you sort of stick your head forward and look you know, looking to your right, you can see the glass front of this general store. Um, and looking to the, you know, to the left, um, you see more of this shelving. This has, again, more kind of uh, dry goods, uh, boxes of things. Some of it looks real. Some of it looks staged. Um, mm. But, you know, kind of pretty full shelves. Um, maybe at the place you're looking in front, there's, you know, there's a box of cereal at the front, but then all the ones behind it are blank, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you don't see anything particularly dangerous right in this corridor. I'll kind of turn back to everyone and just be like, thumbs up, and then walk in. All right. Robin Famous disappears disappears into the general store as the rest oh, of you yeah. are on the other uh, side. Point, point of clarification yes. real quick. Uh, just trying to remember back to yes. a train as well as piano. Yes. Um, okay. We think that they were activated by being close to them. When they perished, now I know we jumped them both, uh -huh. but when they perished, were had they ranged from where they had been? Had they like mo moved significantly? Um, or did they s stay relatively still? They stay. I mean, I, the the fights were over pretty quick, right. and they were and and the thing that they wanted was right there, right? Like the lady just now didn't get a turn. Um, before she died. The only thing you notice is it did look like she was attempting to rise to her feet after she had been teleported <laughs> by, <laughs> magically uh, moved awesome. by Robin. Right. Um, so, and you have not seen them actually move themselves outside of their One state. other uh, point of clarification yeah. there then. if uh, So I believe there was a moment where both Neb and Fariza were close with yes. the train. Did the creatures seem to have a singular focus or, um, you know, e equally focus on both of them around? Um, I don't remember exactly how the fight went down, but equal focus in the sense that, like, a whatever was them. right there, okay. yeah. it lashed out at. Okay. I, I seem it. to remember it was going after me first, and then when Feruza interposed, mm -hmm. it started going after her, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to understand if there's any reason for Silas to believe that a distraction for the creature would um, would actually work or like, you know, so 
if it was grabbing at something mm -hmm. that was touching it, would, you know, everybody be able to Scooby-Doo behind it? Or is it going to be just fully aware of that? And it sounds like he would have seen that, you know, pr probably would see everything. That's going on. It, yeah, it seems it seems focused on whatever sort of at hand. Got it. OK. Uh, more than, you know, more than anything else. All right, uh, so the, the four of you have seen Robin disappear into the general store. Uh, there is this body slumped over a barrel between you and the door. Um, it did not, you know, Robin was able to sneak past it. Uh, what do you all want to do? Do you want to give Robin a moment? Or are no, you gonna go Silas after? is oh, going to go. Gonna go. All right, are you all sneaking past? Yes. I'll yes, wait. but as I pass, I have a, I want to throw a, oh, rough night, huh? in there <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> wait for everybody else since i've posted up as uh -huh. waiting for this thing to activate and once they're in i'll decide okay I, neb is neb is going back and forth whether she wants to try sneaking past this thing okay gotcha uh so who silas it sounds like you were gonna go yeah. first all right stealth check if you're gonna sneak by Oh, I'm sure. still holding that bit of fire just in case. Yep. Um, that's only a 13, which is not very good for Silas. So Silas, as you begin to sneak past, um, you slip on a little bit of ice. Your arm sort of, you know, is going out automatically, kind of naturally to try to save yourself, uh, instinctually to kind of break your fall. As it does, your hand gets very close to this thing's face where suddenly its eyes blink. It reaches up with lightning speed, grabbing for your arm. We are in initiative. Again. Do I get to, do I get, do I were get you the ready? jump on this time? We'll get yeah, you ready. You were ready. Go ahead and give us a thing. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I just um, salsa. Is that just salsa? Could have salsa. Quick. You should have taken salsa. salsa. Thank you, Is there if there's salsa in this general <laughs> store, we're getting it. Um, Silas, the inspiration I can use that on uh, attack roll or damage. Correct. Okay, mm. that's a thirteen to hit. A thirteen to hit will hit. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add this onto the. They're damage. not wearing anything. They're just. <laughs> so that's ten fire damage. Thanks ten to ten fire damage. I, your inspiration's coming back at you. Woo. Uh, so yeah, so Silas, as it, you know, it reaches out towards your hand, uh, immediately it kind of catches fire uh, and you can feel the heat of it as you kind of try to, you know, regain your balance here um, as it, yeah, begins to kind of melt. Uh, everything kind of catching fire, the, the cold blue ice of it begins to sort of disappear as the rotting flesh and the smell of it begins to permeate the air again. Um, all right, I need initiatives from everyone else or from all of you. 14 for Maeve. It was so nice to have a plus to my initiative for a while. <laughs> All right, so sorry, uh, Maeve? 14. 14 for Maeve. Feruza? 19. I was right behind 19 uh, for Silas, that so makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> Silas? 17. 17 for Silas. Neb? 7. 7 for Neb and Robin? 5. A 5 for Robin. That works because you are inside <laughs> so you you've sort of heard probably a you know just a little bit we'll see what you hear as it goes through the initiative but you know it could have been anything there's not a lot yet uh this thing doesn't cry out or anything like that when it catches fire all right feruza top of the initiative Yay. okay so maybe we're, so feruza's axe is out because she you know we were we were easing past this monster yes and silas is going yes. first so she's sort of eagle-eyed like ready to go um she notices almost like in slow motion as like silas feet like twist and turn and she's like <laughs> turn into the skin silas turn into the skin he like slips or something like that and she's like <gasps> and right then she just notices that thing and she's She's ready to go already. She's already like uh -huh. intense. And she's literally gonna swing axe, come right down and the guy's like, he's slumped over. Uh he he's well, yeah, he's starting to rise up as he's twisting around towards the towards Silas. Right in the neck. Right it's in like, the neck. Go ahead, give me reckless. an attack with that axe. Reckless, yeah, reckless advantaged like attack. That. Okay, let's see. With the storm sword spray axe. <gasps> 25. Woo! Nice. Easy hit. Um, yeah, your axe like a, a very satisfying <laughs> thunk, as it hits right into that neck, burying itself halfway through. Go ahead and give me your damage. Okay, let's see. 25 without, and that's not a crit crazy thing. 
That's 19 Woo! damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's 19 damage. Okay. Uh, it is still there, but you, as you pull your axe out and this, again, the shards of this like crystal diamond sort of fly into the air, like spreading, uh, you know, snow, uh, its head remains kind of permanently flopped to the side, almost disconnected from its neck. Um, it looks terrible. Uh, it is not. <laughs> it is Again, not rough night. Oh, rough, man. rough night. Uh, anything else, Faruza? Um, that's all she's gonna do. Okay. Besides, go. <gasps> that's it. Okay. <laughs> Silas, in the pocket. Um, Silas is just going to say, um, "Here you go, petite," and then he uh, takes the card and glows it again and says, uh -huh. "I feel like this is gonna be your twenty-one," and he just throws it right <laughs> down um, at the at the head of this creature. Okay, give me an attack. <laughs> That is uh, 16. 16. Uh, we'll hit. All right. And that is uh, nine damage that time. Nine damage. damage. As this thing slams into the side of this creature, it almost again goes deep, deep, deep into the center of it until it explodes. Feruza <gasps> and Adam, I need you both to make dexterity saving throws. Feruza, oh, oh, you have advantage. Okay. I have. I have an advantage because she has danger sense. Absolutely. So <laughs> since she can see it, and if since she's not blinded or incapacitated, I have advantage. So you said dexterity, right? Dexterity saving throw. Silas? Uh, only a seven. <gasps> Feruza? 18. 18. Feruza, having you know experienced this before, you immediately know to kind of cover your your eyes and turn mm -hmm. away. It sort of you know slides. Uh, shatters against the side of your body but nothing seems to quite get through silas you are going to take uh there we go um five piercing damage and one cold damage Ooh. and somewhere maybe between your buttons you just feel a little <gasps> oh, sharp pain in your chest like a little heart, oh, but you just sort of shake it off. There's just that tight little piercing pain in your heart. Um, you and I will have a conversation later. <gasps> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's gonna get all of us. It's gonna get all of us. You shake it off. It disappears pretty quickly. You know, it's probably just stress. Um, at this point, we are out of initiative. Uh, but Maeve and Neb. Give me a sense of what you do at this moment after this thing explodes. I'd like to see what was in the barrel. <laughs> Absolutely. You right. head forward. Uh, it's not labeled, um, but there is like, you know, a cap to it, like on barrels. Try to pry it open. Yes, please. Yeah, give me a strength check. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, sure. Oh, I love it. Oh, <laughs> that would be a zero. A zero. Oh, okay. oh, so uh, maybe you come yes. over, you know, you, with your intelligence. It's very you know, slippery here. <laughs> with your intelligence, yeah. you know, to like, you know, blow the, the, you know, fluorescent dust off and you're wearing some sort of gloves or you pull your sleeves down, something to protect your hands. But as you go to grip it, <laughs> just, you know, it's, it's like, frozen solid first of all it probably would need a crowbar on the best of days and you're i mean you're just freezing every bit of muscle is just oh sore God, and well tired well. yeah it is it is it's very, not very very combo. cold here um neb i yeah what would you like to do oh i, I, I just want to check no i want to yeah. check with the, the, the remaining uh initiatives here just to give you something before we I think, well, she'll see it explode yes. and, you know, go cover Feruza and Silas and go, are, are the both of you okay? The last time that happened, that that sucked. These things exploding everywhere is not the business. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I've got some scrapes, okay, but, but yeah, I, I, I'll be fine. Okay. Do you need to pick out the, because Feruza had to pick out all the little shards of whatever that is no i mean i think i can get it and and as that happens silas is just going to like run his hand over mm -hmm. kind of 
the area where mm-hmm. this mainly happened. Yep. And uh, I assume if there are any shards or anything, like as the healing uh, starts to go, and I'll, I'll cast this spell, and I'll see if I get enough with this one uh, <laughs> casting. But, um, okay. Yeah, I do. I get 12 back, so you get okay, like shards. So yeah, again, something. all the little, I mean, they're little tiny pieces of, of glass ice, sharp little shards that just kind of, kind of lift off your body into the air and drop to the ground as all those little things start to heal over. Um, there's still that, just that ache in your heart, but it, it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I hate this place at this stage. Like, so I'm sure that that, is, that melancholy is very natural for me to experience uh, and feel right now. Well, the wounds look a lot better. Um, and I don't think it alerted anything else. We're going to have to come up with another plan for attacking these things because well, I mean we can certainly do it from distance the problem is uh, you know like in circumstances like this if we're going to the general store uh, <laughs> then we have to you know we have to actually go past them I think so I think that's where we're going to run into the problem if we can find the shard in yeah. one of these places avoiding the rest of them should be pretty simple yeah, I right. can help well, Robin let's... oh sorry I'm just gonna I was just go, go literally going to say, well, let's yeah. go see what Robin's found. <laughs> so uh, we're going to give Robin here a minute. Robin, so you have heard generally these things going. You think you heard the explosion. You heard Silas say, ah, I'm okay. You know, so this how it can happen. Is there something you'd like to do before they join you? Um, I think she's going to just, how far is it to the front of the store? 15 feet. Not that bad. Okay. Uh, quietly carefully mm-hmm. while looking i just want to just check the front door and see okay, if it's great. locked or so so if we need another way out we can yeah give me a stealth check please come on give me something good oh no that's a three <laughs> it's a <laughs> three as you're moving forward uh and kind of come around the corner uh you are immediately greeted with a uh, at least half dozen figures either sitting, standing, lying in this space. Uh, some of them you can just see their feet uh, kind of sticking, more actual feet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, in, uh, just sticking out between the shelves. Um, but they're, you know, it's hard to kind of make, figure out how many and where they are exactly as they're within this. Um, and you kind of move over towards the main door. You trip over a pair of feet falling oh. to the ground as those feet begin to twitch and a body rises stock up and a gentleman with a long gray beard <sighs> turns to look at you we will pause there for what this a nightmare chapter. oh <laughs> children of air <laughs> oh. 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 brought your snow boots <laughs> well that all went really <laughs> well and smoothly and, and uh, wrong. we will see you all next week and until then please remember that uh life is the most wonderful fairy tale good night everybody good night Bye. <laughs>